In today's video, we're going to go ahead and learn how to use animation events for 2D sprites, how to set them up, and well, actually how to use them. I'm going to go ahead and launch that fireball that we made. Uh, let me just go down, quickly grab it here. I spelled projectiles wrong. That's fine. I'll fix that later. But this fireball that we made in our last video, I'm going to go ahead and launch this when I hit the attack key. So let's go ahead and look at the code for our attack. So it's down at the bottom here. Here's all the code for the attacking. And of course, we've gone over this before, but basically when you hit the F key, as long as we can attack, we'll go ahead and launch this code, which of course flips the toggle so we can't attack anymore. It's gonna call the attack animation, and then it invokes the reset attack flag after a certain amount of time so we can attack again. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and just launch that projectile from here, we could just add it in after the animation. We could also, you know, like call some sort of sound or do anything we want that's associated with the attack. But what if you want to go ahead and set the timing on that attack to happen at a particular point in the animation? I'll go ahead and leave a link down below on how I did this with 3D animations. And it might be a little bit clearer because those animations are well, quite a bit longer and more complex than the one I'm working with now. But this is the process that I use to set it up for 2D. So I'm going to come back into Unity. I'm going to go ahead and select my player, go over to the animation tab. And I'm going to start off with the walk animation. Let's say I wanted to have some animation event happen when a certain spot in the animation is reached. Let's say when his legs are together. We can grab at the top here, the very top line, and scrub through. If I click off of him, I can see his legs a bit better. And let's say it's right here where his legs are together. I want something to happen. I can go ahead and right click anywhere in this line between the keyframes and the numbers to add an animation event. I can drag it to where I want. And then if we notice up here in the inspector, we can, I can go ahead and assign a function to it. And I don't have a function yet, but take note that it's all the functions that I've created. So it's going to go through and look at all the components on your actual game object and pick out the ones that you're allowed to use. But I actually don't want it on the walk animation. So I'm going to right click it. And of course you can edit it or just outright delete it. And I don't want it there. I actually want it on my attack animation. Now my attack animation is actually only one frame, so I can do it at the very start of the frame, or if I scrub through, I can have it at the end. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and put it at the end. And I can just grab it and drag it. Now I don't have an actual function set up for it yet, so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead, save my scene in Unity, jump back into my code, maybe. <laughs> and I'm gonna set that method up now. So I'm just gonna say void launch projectile. There we go. And I need a particle system to shoot out. And I already forget the name of the class that I put on here. I think it was just projectile, wasn't it? It was. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a reference to this. So I'll come all the way up the top and I wanna make sure that it's exposed so I can work with it. So I will make it a serialized field. I have type projectile. And I'm just going to call it projectile prefab. Any spelling mistakes? I can come back and fix those later. So I want to come down to the bottom here and just say projectile, which is the type, which I'm just going to call it pro. And I will instantiate it. And I'm going to go ahead and instantiate it at my current position. Transform.position. Oops, sorry. The first thing we have to say is what we're instantiating, which will be projectile prefab, then the position, which is transform.position. I'm going to take a look to see if I'm actually caching that. But I'll look after. Then I'm going to use quaternion identity to give it the default rotation. I'll end it there. And if we go ahead and look at the projectile script, uh, I was calling fire left or right, so I was passing a value in. I'm going to get rid of this and start now because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to be calling this method down here. So I'll jump back in. And then I can say pro dot fire. It was public, right? Fire left. And then what I'm going to pass in is my sprite renderer dot flip X value. And I did projector, I meant to do projectile. 
There we go. So I'm passing in that flip X value, which we go ahead, select the player. It's right up here. Now, if I have it, pa if I have it ticked, that means it's going to fire left because that means my character is facing left. So it's going to pass in a true value. And if it's not ticked, that means it's passing in false, which means it's going to go the other way. Depending how you have your guy facing or your, the base value for that, that sprite, you might actually have to go ahead and add like a not symbol in front of it if it's going the wrong way. But for me, I think that should work. I'm going to go ahead and save that off. We'll jump back into Unity. And now when I click on that animation event, there's my function. I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'll have to do one more thing after, but let's go ahead and try this out now. The game starts, I hit F, he dodges down, and oops, I forgot to assign it. <laughs> and we get an error. Let's go ahead and select it. I'm going to take that fireball, put it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up. And we'll notice that our player can hit the attack quite a bit, or the, the animation is going off quite a bit, I should say, per hit. But I just hit it once, it fires off a lot of times. We'll go ahead and look at the animator. And when I jump and hit the button just once, notice how many times the attack goes off. There's a few ways we can go ahead and address this, but for simplicity's sake, for now, I'm going to go ahead and in here, just go if we can attack, or better yet, if we can't attack, return, meaning get out of here. And I'm also going to move this can attack down here as well. So essentially, I'll only fire one off at a time. And like I said, there's better ways to take care of this. And we'll look at those a little bit later once our character controller is flushed out a little bit more. But now it should just fire once. And there we go. And of course, if we're facing the other way and we shoot, it should go that way too. Now I want to start... Oh, actually, I'm actually going to change the position where I'm shooting from. I don't want it down there. Even when he's crouched down, I want it about halfway up. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take my player. I want to add another empty to him. So I'm going to open him up. Create an empty. Uh, just to be simplistic, I'm going to go ahead and make it a oh, red circle. I'm going to call this um, fire position. And it's the spot where he's going to shoot from. Let's go raise it up. And I'm still going to keep it coming from the center of him. I just want to see where this goes when I crouch. So it stays about where I want it to be. So great. Let's go and add this up here. So a serialized field. We want to transform which I'm going to call, well, fire position. Let's come down to the bottom where I'm actually launching it off. And no longer will I be going from the transform position. I want it to go from the fire position position. <laughs> there we go. I'll jump back in, make sure I sign this before I forget again. There it is. I'll put that in. And while I'm here, I might as well reapply this, get the prefab updated. And let's take a look at this now when I shoot. Now it's not coming from the bottom. I might even actually raise it a little bit more. But there we go. Now, of course, it probably should actually move faster than me, but you can go ahead and adjust the, the speed on the actual prefab of the particle. But that's it. That's how we go ahead and use the animation events for 2D sprites or animations you make with 2D sprites, I should say. Let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there when I'm not walking through a forest.
are being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>